welcome to another Michael and Marnie Monday. This one combines two frequently asked questions we get. One, how do we budget and pay for going out to eat so often? And secondly, how do I go out to eat so often and maintain my figure? Huh. So this kind of hmm. answer... I didn't know about the second part of that question. Well, yes. Okay. Um, this answers both questions yeah. and Michael has diligently put together a list of tips on his phone and we're just going to get well, into it. Yeah, so pardon the interruptions if we have to look down. We're looking at the iPhone. We entitled this Eating Out and then kind of subtitled it Having Fun in a Way That Does Not Stress You Out. That's so, a good way. You know, just like anything else, eating out is a purchase. It's an expenditure mm -hmm. and so try to make it less stressful. The first thing that we do, and we do it in almost every instance, you know, other than if we're just running the subway Right. or to a fast food restaurant, but if we're going out as a family, Marnie and I are really into planning and exploring the menu in advance. Yes. And maybe you want to talk a little bit about okay. the ways that we try to do our due diligence to figure out what the menu is all about. Well, planning seems to be a theme in everything that we do, but you know, it with is. the internet, you can research what you want to get before you get there. You know exactly what the costs are going into it up front. So I'll just pull up the restaurant's menu if it's one we're not familiar with, and bring the kids into it as well and look over all the options and you know this goes into parenting as well it's not a democracy we will tell the kids you're ordering from this side of the or, menu yeah, here's a or you cannot have you a steak yeah. so you know just the fact of eating out is a privilege you're just happy to not I'm personally happy to not be cooking right so at that point we're just yeah. happy to be there yeah, anything else is just gravy that's exactly right so the second part of it is once you figured out the restaurant and you've kind of identified some of the parameters around the menu and the selections for the adults or the kids is, um, you know, I know it's really awkward, but when you sit down and your wait staff comes to greet you, that kind of sets the tone for the um, for the meal. Right. And I'm a former waiter from you know 30 years <laughs> and ago. And I'm a former hostess. And Marty's <laughs> a former hostess, but I get that that when you sit down, you know, the question is how do you have some control over what's going to be taking place for the next hour and a half or so that you're sitting at the restaurant. And what I've found, and, and Marnie and I have both kind of collectively found, is that you can easily set the tone by just telling the waiter, uh, we'll get four waters to start with, mm -hmm. maybe a lemon and a lime on the side, and see what happens. Don't feel obligated to just start off ordering drinks. Uh, first of all... We never order drinks. Yeah, Marnie said, Marnie is right. We, we really don't ever order drinks. It's, it's a line item on your, on your bill at the end of the day that... You know, it's not really part of the restaurant necessarily, unless you're going as an adult and you're getting some specific mixed drinks or something. But even I'd rather general eat family meal. We'd rather eat our food. Eat the cost, not the drink cost. it. Yeah, and you can get those drinks anywhere, whether it's soda, tea, or what have you. Right. Um, and those add up. You know, honestly, really for a family of four and you get four sodas, um, it easily could be with tax over ten dollars when you think about it. Yes. You know, so and it's some added calories. Three or four dollars a soda. Yes. Yeah. And it's added calories, so that's filling up with water. It's healthier. Yeah. It's less expensive, and right. So yeah. our recommendation, to the extent that you have the same type of issue when you sit down and how do you interact with your wait staff, is to just say very casually, "Hey, you know, we're just going to start off with four waters uh, for the table." And you know, and we'll see what happens after we get the waters. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll come back to you on further drinks, basically. And I guarantee it that in most instances, you might not get back to them with further drinks. Nope. Then, as it relates to the food, you know, how do you start the food part? You know, what I've found uh, with Marnie over the years is that it's actually fun to just kind of not feel pressured. You know, uh, restaurants, many restaurants, and wait staff are kind of instructed: look, get that full order, all courses except dessert up front because people have a tendency as consumers when they sit down at a restaurant Big eyes. to want to have, yeah, obviously your eyes are bigger than your stomach, but you see a lot and, and, and restaurants know that you probably aren't going to finish most everything that you order, but they want you to order as much as you can. And so what's not a bad idea is to start by ordering an appetizer or two for the table. And again, like with the drinks, tell the wait staff, Hey, we'll get back to you with respect to our entree orders, if any. Really, but just tell them, you know, we'll start with a couple appetizers and we're still perusing the menu, and then we'll get back to you. Because you will find a couple of things. One, appetizers are generally less expensive than entrees, and once you've had a glass of water and shared an appetizer or two with the whole table, you might not be that hungry anymore. Well, that's exactly right. So, so that's also a way, back to how do I keep my figure, I don't eat huge portions. And so what you'll find by pacing yourself like this with respect to the drinks and with respect to the ordering of appetizers, is that, uh, as Marnie is saying, 
you may not when it comes time to maybe putting in a further order you, you're probably not inclined to order as much as you would have at the outset right that's almost an absolute truism that would not be the case so maybe you'll be inclined to just split an entree we do that a lot we do do that or maybe you'll want to stick to ordering maybe just another appetizer. Marnie and Marnie and I are I kind of famous for it. Let's just do kind of tapas. You can create a tapas menu at any restaurant, you know, basically by just looking at the appetizers. That's tapas, T-A-P-A-S, -A -S, not topless. Tapas, tapas-like <laughs> restaurant. Right. Yeah, okay. You may also, and we've done this too, you have a couple of appetizers, maybe you order a salad and you split it, and then mm -hmm. you're kind of thinking, you know what, um, I'm kind of full but maybe we'll order a dessert or two for the table. That's my favorite. Yeah. That, when that happens, it's kind of fun to do day. appetizers and then you move right to dessert. Mm -hmm. And when you match that uh, invoice or, or bill up against what a more typical traditional bill would look like, where you order appetizers, maybe have a salad or soup, entree, and have, have a dessert, I mean, you're saving, I don't know what it would be to speculate on it, but it's a significant saving. You're saving a lot of money. And you're eating drinks. healthier, and you're actually getting a more of a variety on, on the table. So right. it's a win-win. So inherently, I think this kind of pacing, pacing. you know, <laughs> as, as most of y'all have learned, you know, I'm kind of thinking a little bit more in terms of the consumer economics, kind of the financial side of it. Marty thinks of other things, but from the, from the bill at the end of the day, this kind of pace reduces your overall costs, I would say, and sometimes it's going to reduce it rather significantly. A um, couple more tips? A couple more tips. So, you know, where do you go to kind of find some deals? We check out Groupon periodically. Mm -hmm. We've done Groupon. There's restaurant.com. We also look at the back of our grocery store. Yes, uh, there's receipts. coupons. There's actually coupons, at least at our grocery store, and I'm mm -hmm. sure at many, many grocery stores it's the same way. We also get entertainment books over mm -hmm. the years from For the school, school activities. Yeah. All kinds of coupons. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is it doesn't always have to be dinner. Go out to lunch or even yeah, breakfast. That's right. We've talked Those about Those are before. usually much less expensive options than dinner as well. To kind of put a fine point on it, look, if you've got your cash items budgeted, remember back to our kind of budgeting series, you're funding your entertainment costs and eating out as a component of that entertainment cost. So on a weekly amount, you've kind of based that line item already in your budget. And that gives you kind of the nice parameter and limitation that you might need to make a sound decision in terms of the type of restaurant you want to go to, the food that you want to order and in terms of achieving you know, the overall objective, for us at least, mm -hmm. which is to have a fun dining experience yes, and no to stress. not stress about it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No fun that way. That's exactly right. I know many of you think these tips are just common sense, but we thought that maybe they'd help somebody. So in addition to us sharing our tips, please feel free to share yours. And as yeah. always, don't forget to tip your server well. That's right. As former waitstaff. Because <laughs> that, as former waitstaff, but also we have found that, you know, if you go back to a restaurant, um, they'll remember you and yeah. everybody's experience will be even happier. That could be uh, regional as well, as we know. Yeah, some, yes, some, some places don't. Some places. But I just wanted to add that in there. Yeah, always remember right. to tip your server because yeah. they do work hard for you. So thank you so much. Don't forget to share your tips on how you save money when you go out to eat because we are all helping each other here in this little village. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. We always have a great time making it. We do. It. It's fun. And um, let us know what you're interested in hearing about next. And we will see you next Monday. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Today we are talking about vacations and how to save for them and how to budget for them and some budget saving tips that both of us have.